In a small town where tales echo through generations, a poignant narrative unfolds, stirring the hearts of all who hear it. At the tender age of 16, Carlos stood by his mother's graveside, a whirlwind of emotions enveloping him, the memory of her departure, seven years prior, still etched painfully in his mind, yet amidst the sorrow, a flicker of solace emerged as he realized he could finally pay his respects openly, without concealment from his father recollections flooded his mind, transporting him back to that fateful Wednesday, when his world shattered into a million irreparable pieces, returning home from school, Carlos was met not with his mother's warm embrace, but with an eerie silence that pervaded the air, in his parents' chamber, he found his father, tears staining his face, bearing news that would alter their lives forever, I've returned from the hospital, Antonio uttered, his voice trembling with grief, your mother, she's gone, shock reverberated through Carlos. When he grappled with the enormity of the loss, his mother, his anchor, snatched away without warning, however, amidst his anguish, his father remained reticent, withholding the circumstances surrounding her passing, leaving Carlos to navigate his sorrow in a vacuum of unanswered questions. In the ensuing years, the household descended into a somber silence, permeated by the absence of the vibrant presence that once filled its walls. Carlos yearned for his mother's comforting embrace, her gentle guidance, but found himself adrift in a sea of grief, with only fleeting memories to cling to, when he stood before her resting place, the ache of longing mingling with the bitterness of unanswered queries, Carlos couldn't help but wonder what secrets lay buried with his mother, and what unforeseen twists fate had in store for him, in the wake of Isabel's passing, Carlos's world spiraled into turmoil, his father, consumed by grief, became a stranger to him, withdrawn, rigid, and prone to fits of rage that left Carlos feeling caught in the crossfire of their familial discord. As tensions escalated, Carlos found himself disengaging from school, his once promising academic performance giving way to apathy. However, amidst the chaos, he discovered solace in unexpected places, channeling his innate talents. Carlos honed his culinary skills and assumed the role of caretaker at home finding a semblance of control in the orderly routines he established, music, too, became a sanctuary for his fractured spirit, offering a fleeting reprieve from the ache that gnawed at his heart, still, an unfillable void lingered within him, a yearning for something elusive, something lost, in his quest for solace, Carlos sought refuge at his mother's graveside, where silent conversations with Isabel offered a fleeting sense of peace amid life's tumultuous currents, however, just as he began to find a fragile equilibrium, fate dealt him another cruel blow, Antonio, his estranged father, succumbed to a sudden heart attack, at the crossroads of grief and uncertainty, Carlos grappled with the weight of newfound solitude, bereft of familial ties and adrift in a sea of unanswered questions, he resolved to forge ahead, determined to honor the memories of those he had lost without succumbing to the shadows that threatened to engulf him, standing amidst the silent sentinels of his parents' graves, Carlos confronted his tangled emotions with a mixture of trepidation and resolve, with a heavy heart, he knelt before Isabel's resting place, offering a tender tribute to the mother he had longed for, the one constant in a world fraught with instability, in the hushed stillness of the cemetery, Carlos poured out his heart, his words a poignant plea for comfort, for guidance, for absolution, yet, as tears streamed down his cheeks and despair threatened to consume him, a voice, a familiar voice, long silenced, pierced the silence, hello, dear, the voice whispered, sending shivers down Carlos's spine, in that moment, amid the quiet reverence of the graveyard, Carlos's world tilted on its axis once more, when the boundaries between past and present blurred, and the promise of a miraculous reunion beckoned on the horizon when Carlos slowly turned around, his eyes widened in disbelief when they settled on a figure he never thought he'd see again, Isabel, the woman standing before him, older now, bearing the marks of time, but still radiating the same beauty he remembered, his heart raced, emotions, swirling like a tempest within him, how could this be real, how could his mother stand before him after all these years, Isabel reached out to him, a wavering grin on her lips as her voice trembled with emotion, she drew nearer to him and said, Carlos, my love, I know this is overwhelming, but there's an explanation, Carlos was overcome with a plethora of contradictory feelings and could not help but give her a firm hug, her presence and the warmth of her hug were all that mattered at that moment, time appeared to stop still when they held each other, providing them with a brief reprieve from the burden of their shared past, Carlos prepared himself for the truth he knew was waiting for him when they finally said goodbye, despite the trembling in her hands, 
Isabel started, I have something important to tell you, her voice firm, Carlos, you see. I'm not your real mother, your biological mother and Antonio's first wife, Melinda, is buried here, after she died away, I discovered you, and I fell in love with you as if you were my own son, Carlos was stunned into silence when he tried to take in the news, his whole universe, which was based on a falsehood, appeared to come tumbling down around him, his head was filled with questions, each more confusing than the previous, with a tone of astonishment, he eventually managed to ask, why did Antonio claim you were dead? After Isabel's explanation, Carlos was left to confront the terrible reality of his father's conduct, Isabel had revealed a web of deceit created by pride and shame as the truth unfurled before him, Carlos couldn't help but feel a sense of betrayal mingled with profound sadness, Antonio's misguided attempts to shield him from the past had only deepened the chasm between them, leaving Carlos to navigate the complexities of his identity alone in that poignant moment, amidst the hallowed silence of the cemetery, Carlos realized that the truth, however painful, was the key to unlocking the mysteries of his past and forging a path toward healing, and with Isabel by his side, he knew he wouldn't have to face it alone, Carlos felt a tumult of emotions surging within him as Isabel explained why she hadn't fought for custody, leaving him feeling abandoned and hurt, despite understanding her reasons, a lingering sense of resentment gnawed at him, mingled with the pain of longing for the mother he had yearned for all these years, yet, amidst the turmoil, Carlos found a flicker of understanding, recognizing the complexities of Antonio's character and the fear that had kept Isabel at bay, I think I understand, at least in part, he confessed, his gaze reflecting a blend of sadness and comprehension with their reunion, Carlos and Isabel began to mend the frayed threads of their relationship, facing the echoes of the past together, in each conversation, they found solace and healing, realizing that true motherhood transcends biological ties, rooted instead in love and sacrifice, when their bond deepened, the once desolate house resonated once more with warmth and joy, a testament to the power of forgiveness and second chances, their story serves as a poignant reminder that despite life's storms and unexpected twists, there's always an opportunity for reconciliation and renewal. Now, as viewers reflect on the tale, they're invited to ponder its lessons and share their thoughts. Did they appreciate the surprise twist life had in store for Carlos? What did they learn from his journey? There participation in the discussion not only enriches the narrative but also reinforces the message of hope and resilience. That's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story. When the financial strain tightened its grip on the Hudson family, Grace made a difficult choice. She left her devoted husband, George, and their four children to pursue a relationship with a wealthier man. Little did she know that their paths would cross again, and regret would soon follow. George, a simple man living on the outskirts of a bustling American city, cherished his seemingly perfect family, with Grace at home. Caring for their children and George as the sole breadwinner, they navigated life's challenges together, however, financial woes loomed large, especially when bills arrived, despite their eldest daughter being of school age, Grace hadn't sought employment, her history of joblessness stemmed from past disciplinary issues at her only job, which ended when she became pregnant with their first child. With George's income about to be slashed due to his company's financial troubles, the weight of providing for the family fell squarely on his shoulders, facing the daunting reality of a reduced salary, George scoured the classifieds, seeking part-time work to ensure his children's well-being. Amidst the uncertainty, he grappled with the weight of responsibility and the necessity of making difficult decisions in a time of crisis in that moment, his youngest daughter, just eight years old approached George with an innocent question, Daddy, can Santa Claus bring me a Christmas present this year? I've been good, she said, her sincerity shining through. Indeed, the little girl had been a mild daughter, often shouldering responsibilities beyond her years, including keeping the house in order, a duty typically assigned to Grace but consistently delegated to her. George gazed sadly at his daughter's hopeful face, grappling with how to respond, he knew the reality all too well. He was scraping together coins just to avoid having essential services cut off. A Christmas gift seemed like an impossible luxury. Determined to hold back tears that threatened to betray his inner turmoil, George felt a profound sense of failure as a father. He silently chastised himself for not being able to provide the life he had hoped for his family, seeking solace or perhaps a word of encouragement from his wife. George found only disappointment. Grace seemed indifferent to his distress 
brushing off his attempts at conversation with a dismissive comment about their miserable life, with a sharp turn. Away, she drifted off to sleep, seemingly unconcerned about George's anguish or the family's future. As dawn approached, George noticed Grace's absence from their shared bed, a departure from her usual habit of sleeping in until midday, despite his unease, he resolved to soldier on with his daily routine, heading out to work like he always did, silently carrying the weight of his family's uncertain future on his shoulders, when he roused himself to face the day and pursue job opportunities, George. Reflected with a touch of humor, I may be getting older, but I can still dream, with determination, he made his way to the kitchen to prepare breakfast for his children and see them off to school, but when he reached for the refrigerator, his heart sank at the thought of yet another looming bill, however, to his surprise, what awaited him was not a dreaded invoice, but a letter pinned to the door, a missive from his wife, with a mix of apprehension and curiosity, George unfolded the note, only to be met with words that shattered his world, in the letter, Grace expressed disillusionment with their marriage, citing George's perpetual concern over finances as a source of pressure and dissatisfaction. She confessed to seeking solace and security in the arms of an older, more prosperous man, claiming that he could provide the comfortable life she believed she deserved. With cold finality, she announced her decision to leave, leaving behind their children in George's care. The weight of Grace's words bore down on George causing him to collapse onto the icy kitchen floor, it was his eldest son who rushed to his aid, bewildered by his father's sudden distress, George, masking his turmoil with a feeble excuse, assured his son that everything was alright before seeing the children off to school, seeking solace in the understanding of his compassionate apartment manager, George managed to secure a day off from work, unlike the company's callous executives, his manager recognized the challenges of single fatherhood and offered his support in this time of crisis, with his world turned upside down, George faced the daunting task of rebuilding his life and caring for his children, all while grappling with the betrayal that had blindsided him, the rest of the afternoon and early evening blurred into a haze of uncertainty for George as he grappled with the daunting prospect of single fatherhood, despite his efforts to envision a future he had never anticipated, fear gnawed at him. From within, what if he couldn't manage alone with his children? The following day, George found solace in confiding his predicament to his closest colleagues at work. Tom, a friend of over a decade, offered a perspective that resonated deeply. It's a tough situation, George, but at least now you know who she truly was, Tom remarked, his words carrying a mix of empathy and wisdom. An unexpected intervention came from a new co-worker, Violet, who overheard their conversation, drawing from her own experience of being raised solely by her father after her mother's passing, Violet extended a hand of understanding and encouragement, it wasn't easy for my father, but with a little help, he managed, you can too, she assured George, buoyed by Violet's support and genuine affection for children, George found renewed hope, despite his initial apprehension about entrusting his precious children to a stranger. Weeks of exhaustion and overwhelming responsibility softened his resistance, eventually, he relented, accepting Violet's offer of assistance, as time passed, George came to appreciate Violet's presence in their lives, her kindness and dedication easing the burden of single parenthood, in her, he found not just a helping hand, but a true friend and ally on this unexpected journey, with the months rolled by, George found himself increasingly burdened by mounting bills and a sense of impending financial strain, despite the intimacy he shared with Violet, he realized he couldn't continue, like this for much longer, in a bid to alleviate their financial woes, George proposed a contract to Violet, offering her a position as a nanny for his children, this would allow her to borrow her cousin's taxi, securing the extra income they so desperately needed, however, Violet promptly declined, insisting that she could care for George's children after work and even prepare meals for them without accepting any payment, it's no trouble for me, she reassured him, I adore spending time with them. Let's consider this a gesture of friendship, not a formal employment agreement, but what began as a simple friendship soon blossomed into something deeper, fueled by their shared qualities and aspirations. When their romance flourished, Violet found herself spending more time at George's house than her own. The children began to inquire about their mother's absence, but George couldn't bring himself to reveal the truth, that she had abandoned them. Instead, he concocted a story about her. Traveling for a new job, despite appearances, George's mental and physical exhaustion continued to escalate, his early mornings and late nights driving the taxi left him drained, 
With Violet and the children serving as his sole source of joy, George had assumed the responsibilities of adulthood from a young age, shouldering the burden of supporting his family without ever considering his own dreams or ambitions. When Violet pressed him about his aspirations, he found himself at a loss for words, prompting introspection amidst his taxi journeys. George found solace in memories of his father's carpentry work, a hobby he had once enjoyed when he was young. George had cherished moments spent alongside his father, indulging in their shared passion for woodworking. Together, they crafted furniture, chairs, and a myriad of imaginative creations. However, as circumstances unfolded in George's life, he drifted away from this beloved hobby. One day, amidst the hustle of his taxi rounds, George stumbled upon an old piece of wooden furniture. Discarded on a sidewalk in a peripheral part of the city, while others saw only refuse, George glimpsed opportunity, halting his taxi, he heaved the decrepit wardrobe into his trunk, swiftly informing his headquarters of a change in plans, racing home, he retrieved his long-neglected tools and set to work without delay, as dawn broke, Violet was roused by the sounds emanating from the garage, surveying the scene, she beheld George amidst a flurry of sawdust, laboring tirelessly throughout the night, her eyes fell upon the restored wardrobe, its transformation eclipsing the original in beauty, you never cease to amaze me, George Alexander Hudson, this is exquisite, she exclaimed, urging him to pursue his passion further, to her, the rarity of finding joy in one's craft and excelling at it deserved to be nurtured, George chuckled modestly, brushing off the praise as a mere weekend diversion, with the sun casting a warm glow, he declared it a perfect Saturday, when he tidied up and prepared to sate his hunger, he left the garage door ajar, a passerby, drawn by the allure of the newly restored furniture, paused to admire its beauty, excuse me, dear, how much does this piece cost, George, the female asked, her inquiry initially baffled George, but he followed her eyes and soon understood her meaning, instead of offering a fixed amount, he inquired about her willingness to pay, the old woman was clearly surprised when she received her kind offer since she realized how much money she could make by taking up a long-lost interest Violet saw the sparkle of joy in her boyfriend's eyes and knew that this was a critical time in their relationship, with her constant support and her promise to step in if necessary, George took a risk by quitting his cab job and dedicating himself fully to learning carpentry, holding on to his job at the construction company as a safety net for his kids, George bought supplies in bulk and decided to hold on to his reliable old tools because they would always be useful, George's natural inventiveness blossomed, as seen by his ability to make and repair a wide range of wooden objects, at first concentrating just on product development, he reopened his garage and saw an astounding increase in demand, he sold more than half of his inventory in a single day, resulting in his first real profit, albeit a little amount with lots of potential, seeing that their business had enormous potential, Violet made the decision to use some of her hard earned earnings to buy new equipment that would enable them to increase production rates. During these revolutionary shifts, George's kids hardly knew their dad at all, and they saw him radiate a happiness he had never experienced before. Nearly a year into this newfound routine, George reached a pivotal realization. It was time to transcend the confines of his garage and establish a full-fledged workshop. By doing so, he could bid farewell to his construction job and devote his undivided attention to carpentry, bolstering production and sales alike. Throughout the journey of George's resurgence, Violet showered his children with unwavering compassion and care, steadfastly supporting her boyfriend's endeavors. Her belief in him was unwavering, expressed fervently each day. However, on the fateful day of his store's grand opening, George faced an unforeseen and shocking revelation. Amidst the bustling excitement of the event, George was confronted by his estranged wife, Grace, who had abandoned him and their children, her audacity was staggering, but George's curiosity compelled him to hear her out, Grace pleaded to return home, seeking forgiveness for her past transgressions, but George stood firm, asserting that she had erred and now needed to forge her own path, finding stability and purpose. When Grace divulged the betrayal she herself had suffered at the hands of another man, George's response was resolute, now you know how I felt, he remarked, bidding her to depart and never return, enraged, Grace lashed out, attempting to vandalize the very furniture George had painstakingly crafted, swiftly, he defused the situation, ushering her away, following this altercation, Grace never again sought out her ex-husband, nor did she endeavor to reconnect with her own children, in solitude, 
George reflected that perhaps it was for the best. He remained steadfast in his commitment to his children, asserting that he would endure it all over again to ensure their well. Being with the story concludes, George reflects on the journey, finding solace in the resolution of his past and the promise of the future, above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.